In 1995, the movie Casino depicted a fictional tale of the Chicago mob's role in Las Vegas during the 1970s, starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Sharon Stone. The film includes a frightening scene of two characters based on Chicago mobsters Anthony and Michael Spilatro, who are found buried in an Indiana cornfield, buried in a way that they would never be found. But they were. So what happened? No comment. Perhaps that is a more appropriate question for Tony Spilatro this afternoon than it was three years ago. Then, the reputed manager of the mob's Las Vegas business had bonded out of Cook County Jail on a murder charge. Now, Spilatro and his brother Michael may be murder victims themselves, although they are officially listed as missing persons. 48-year-old Tony and 41-year-old Michael were last seen Saturday here at Michael's home in West Suburban Oak Park. The last time they were seen, according to Ann, which is Michael's wife, was that they were seen about 2 p.m. on Saturday when they left the residence at 1102 South Maple. Uh, she has not seen or heard from them since. Where were they going? She did not indicate where they were going. Didn't know that they'd be out and they'd be back later. They never returned, but the car they left in was found last night in the parking lot of this Schiller Park Motel. A passing policeman noticed the 1986 Lincoln Mark 7, which had also been listed as missing. The FBI found no clues in the car, only a single golf club in the trunk, a driver, a couple of jackets in the back seat, a garage door opener, and a nickel on the front console. We found a cassette still in the dashboard tape player, the pre-recorded tape called James Bond 007. 13 originals. Bloodstains, weapons, anything no, unusual? Nothing unusual that we can determine at this time. What does that say to you? I mean, these people have just vanished? Well, this time they're still missing. We don't know what happened to them. The car was parked out there. Uh, they could have certainly parked it. Somebody else could have certainly parked it. We have no knowledge of who parked the car there. Tony Spilatro's wife, Nancy, seemed very surprised that the car was found in this lot just five minutes from O'Hare Airport. I spoke with Nancy Spilatro by phone at the family's home in Las Vegas. She would not say why she was concerned about the car's proximity to O'Hare, but the airport has traditionally been a favorite dumping spot for murdered mobsters. The airport might also be an easy place by which Spilatro would leave the country. But Nancy Spilatro told me she has not heard from her husband, she has no idea where he is, she has no idea what happened to him. I just find it most unlikely. Most, most unlikely. I prefer to think that they're out on frolic and that uh, they'll come walking home tonight, uh, perhaps a little inebriated, and they'll have half the uh, family angry at them. That is, their family angry at them. And uh, he'll probably be facing divorce proceedings by tomorrow. That's what I prefer to think. Tony Spilatro, once considered an heir to the crime syndicate throne in Chicago, has as of late been a liability, according to Mafia observers. He is to be retried in Las Vegas beginning Monday for allegedly masterminding a burglary ring called the Hole in the Wall Gang. He is still under federal indictment for his alleged role in outfit-operated casino skimming in Las Vegas. His brother, who manages this West Side restaurant and is a part-time actor, was charged in the Vegas burglary ring, but the case was dropped. He is currently under indictment on federal extortion charges, all of which leads Oak Park investigators to speculate that the Spilatros are being kept quiet by the mob's method of choice, murder. The possibility does exist, naturally. Naturally, considering the background of both individuals. Earlier this morning, detectives and federal agents invaded a junkyard in DuPage County, just west of Chicago. They thought they might find the bodies of the two Spilatros. A tipster had told the feds that a gray Oldsmobile allegedly used in the abduction of the brothers could be found there. In keeping with the legendary M.O. of the Chicago mob, officials fully expected that they might find corpses inside the trunk of the automobile. In the end, they found nothing to tie the junkyard or any of the cars there to the Spilatro disappearance, and the search was called off. The bodies were found buried in this five-foot-deep grave just off of Indiana Highway 114, less than four miles from the Illinois state line. The grave site was discovered Sunday night by a farmer who couldn't figure out why his recently planted corn had sprouted everywhere but on the small patch on the eastern edge of his field. The bodies were located with 
uh, both of them in the same grave site uh, with the two individuals, one stacked on top of the other. Positive identification was made late today through dental records. The brothers disappeared on June the 14th and were last seen leaving Michael Spilatro's Oak Park duplex. They were officially reported missing two days later by Michael's wife. The Spilatro's murder comes during a realignment of power in the Chicago mob and also at a time when the brothers are each facing federal indictments and the possibility of lengthy prison sentences. While investigators look for clues behind the Spilatro killings, one question they are no doubt asking is why this side in rural Indiana? It's reported that Chicago syndicate boss Joey Iupa either owns or once owned land just a few miles away from the grave site. Other evidence, investigators are reportedly looking at a burned out car recently found near the grave site. The investigation has determined that an automobile that was stolen in Chicago on the 15th of June uh, was determined to have been set afire within a distance of approximately two miles uh, from the scene of the double uh, homicide and burial. The investigation is continuing to determine the circumstances of the theft of that vehicle on the south side of Chicago and its transportation uh, into the state of Indiana and nearby where we are now. While it is no surprise that the brothers fell victim to a mob hit, what is surprising is the manner in which their bodies were disposed of. The deep grave is clearly out of character for crime syndicate killings, leaving authorities to speculate that the Spilatros were never meant to be found. Chicago's FBI chief described it as a botched burial. The fact that we're standing here now and we know where the uh, two bodies were buried uh, subsequent to their murders uh, would indicate to me that uh, it was a botched attempt. Who killed the Spilatro brothers and why will no doubt be the subject of a lengthy investigation and like most other mob killings may never be solved. Well, there were two. Um, I got there after the first, pardon me, first was already out and the second one was deep over my head, I would say. Two men? I believe. I, I don't want to say for sure. Yeah. It looked like they had been shot. I can't say. Were they, they in were... suits? No. No. Naked Leisure ones? clothes? No. It, it was very hard to tell. They were, they'd been in the ground. About three foot down, we ran into the, the first body. Of course, State totally Wildlife Division Supervisor Dick Hudson and a friend discovered the bodies last night. A farmer who leases this state land just north of Morocco, Indiana, had called them to say it looked like something had been buried near the edge of his new corn crop. After a little digging, Hudson made the grizzly find. And we hit him somewhere along in the side. I told Dylan, hey, this don't look like any animal skin I've ever seen unless it's human. And uh, we dug around a little bit till we came to his skivvies or his underwear, and we decided that was far enough, and we left. As has been the case in many mafia hits, both victims were only wearing their underwear. Sources say that shows they now may hide nothing. Indiana State Police tonight say one Spilatro had on cotton shorts, the other exotic nylon see-through underwear. Their clothes have not been found. I think you'd have to say after viewing the crime scene uh, that in certain aspects of the double homicide uh, were botched uh, by the assassins or by the murderers. Uh, the depth of the hole goes at least uh, five feet. It's very, very clear to us from a law enforcement perspective uh, that the person's responsible for this uh, left the scene of the crime with the anticipation that the remains would not ever be found. Anthony Little Tony Spilatro and his brother Michael were not found for nine days. The only sign of the pair was their Lincoln Mark 7 automobile found parked in a motel parking lot near O'Hare Field. Federal agents tonight believe the Spilatros were driven to Indiana in this car, which is believed to have been torched after the brothers were buried. The burned out automobile was found about two miles due west of the grave site, right down there. The car roughly halfway to a farm, reportedly once owned by jailed Chicago godfather Joseph Joey O'Brien Ayupa. Could it be that the Spilatros were driven down here believing they were to meet with fellow mobsters at Ayupa's secluded rural home? I would have to say yes, it does pique our interest, yes. He still owns that farm? Does he still own that farm? I have no further questions about Mr. Ayupa. Essentially, the bodies of both Anthony and Michael Spilatro showed very similar injuries. Uh, the injuries were primarily blunt force injuries. Um, they were about the head, the neck, uh, and the chest, and to some extent the extremities. He was injury to the neck, but uh, 
uh, no evidence that there was actually a strangulation. Do you think the bodies were in the grave for what period of time? The bodies had been in the grave for uh, uh, several days, uh, at least a, a week and possibly longer. But the movie version is wrong. According to mobster-turned-informant Nick Calabrese, the Spilatro brothers were killed not in an Indiana cornfield, but here, in the quiet Chicago suburb of Bensonville. Why should a jury believe Nick Calabrese about the Spilatro murders? Because Calabrese admits he was one of the killers. He's also fessed up to participating in 14 other mob murders and is ready to tell all he knows about the Chicago outfit, including his own brother Frank. This is the story told by Calabrese and corroborated by the FBI with other sources. Tony Spilatro, who is facing three indictments in Las Vegas, returned to Chicago in the belief that he might be in line for a promotion in his hometown. Former mob associate Slick Hanner. The reason they got killed was they was going back to Chicago to take over the outfit. He was getting his crew together and telling them all we're going back to Chicago. Acting boss Joe Ferriola, now deceased, saw it differently and ordered the murders. Spilatro's presumed boss, Joey the Clown Lombardo, allegedly signed off on the hits. The Spilatro brothers were wary about going to a meeting but changed their minds about taking guns along, presumably because someone close to them put their minds at ease. According to Calabrese, the Spilatro's were picked up by James Marcello, currently listed as a boss of the outfit, and were driven to the Bensonville suburb to a house near this intersection. Tony was supposed to get a promotion. Michael was to become a made member. When they got to the house, they were taken to the basement for the ceremony, and that's where Marcello, Calabrese, and four other men beat them to death. At least two men, including hitman John Fecarata, put the bodies in a car and jumped on the highway. As the I-team learned, one of the first signs they would have seen directs them toward Indiana and the cornfield. Former Spilatro underling hitman Frank Collada tried to put Spilatro away himself, but is still bothered by the imagery. If I had to kill him, I couldn't kill him that way. I would have just shot him. I couldn't beat him to death like that. Or let his brother watch it or vice versa. The bodies were never supposed to be found, but were. For botching the burial job, Ferricata was murdered by Nick Calabrese. Years later, DNA evidence from that murder allowed the FBI to turn Calabrese into a witness. As the bodies of Anthony and Michael Spilatro were finally released by authorities, the families of the reputed mobsters learned that the Chicago Archdiocese has forbidden a public church funeral. It's not the first time church officials here have taken that stand where organized crime is involved. To avoid scandalizing the faithful, Joseph Little Caesar DeVarco was denied a public mass last January. But DeVarco had been found guilty of racketeering and died while in federal custody. A spokeswoman for the Archdiocese says even though the Spilatro brothers were never found guilty by any jury, their reputation for involvement with organized crime is well known. Uh, it seems to me that the church is going by whatever, whatever is read in the newspaper, and the stuff that's been in the newspaper has just been vicious, it's been lies. Vic Sampanetti has been friends with the Spilatro since childhood. He says the family is very disappointed. I'm very bitter. I, I can't understand it. The church teaches us teaches our children love and forgiveness, and yet I don't see the church practicing love and forgiveness. Most observers think the decision is based more on Anthony Spilatro's reputation as the mob's man in Las Vegas. The parish where Michael Spilatro was a member has been flooded with phone calls. Even the pastor disagrees with the attempt to avoid scandal. All I can do is to actually empathize with the family and I offer to say a memorial mass at a subsequent date if they would like me to do so. The Archdiocese states that this is not a judgment about eternal salvation nor about moral guilt or innocence, that it is seeking to respect both the needs of the family and the needs of the entire church community. Funeral services without the public mass are scheduled for Friday.